Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to do two major things. One, we're going to ask three questions. What is bile? What are bile acids and how do those differ from bile salts? And then we're going to do a brief introduction on the basics of the it's a simplified version of the biosynthetic pathway for uh, the major bile acids that we're going to see in vivo. All right, so first of all, what is bile? Well, bile is a substance. It's a solution or mixture of a bunch of different compounds that's produced by the liver. Okay, and, and the solution of bile is going to contain a lot of different compounds, one of which is uh, this compound right here. This is called taracolic acid. This is actually what we're going to see is called a secondary bile acid, but it is nonetheless a bile acid. It's one of the compounds that's going to be found in bile. There are other kinds as well. And these types of compounds, these bile acids, are going to be very important in the absorption and digestion of lipid substances. So let's think about the different kinds of lipid substances we can have. We can have triglycerides and eventually fatty acids from their breakdown, phospholipids, and again, fatty acids from their breakdown, and then also things like cholesterol that's from the diet, and then also fat-soluble vitamins such as A, D, E, and K. And it turns out that bile acids like this one, taracolic acid, are gonna be really important in emulsifying the fatty acids from the diet. So uh, fatty acids will do something very similar to this. These are actually phospholipids as shown here, but fatty acids do something very similar. Uh, fatty acids, due to the hydrophobic effect and the fact that they're not really that soluble in water, what they'll do is they'll actually form these structures called micelles. And really micelles are going to look more like a sphere. This is just cut in half so you can see the interior. And remember, uh, fatty acids and phospholipids alike they have a more or less soluble component on the outside. That's the head of the phospholipid, and really the, um, uh, the fatty acid carboxyl is also going to be polar and soluble. And then the interior of the micelles where the tails are that are hydrophobic to uh, remove them from the watery environment, they go to the interior of the micell. This micell cannot be absorbed by the intestines efficiently at all. It has to be broken up. And one of the ways that uh, bile functions is by secreting these substances, these compounds called bile acids. And what they do is they kind of, due to their amphipathic nature, they kind of intercalate between the fatty acids of a micelle and they effectively break up this micelle so that the fatty acids are all separated and then they're much more easily absorbed. They're kind of going to do a similar thing to cholesterol and also the fat soluble vitamins. And so overall what the bile acids are doing is they're going to increase the efficiency of the digestion and the absorption of lipid substances. So that way we can absorb more of them. The biosynthesis of all of these bile acids is going to occur in the liver. So the liver is the predominant biosynthetic source. However, this is the gallbladder right here. The liver will actually move the bile, at least a large portion of it, into the gallbladder for uh, transient storage. And assuming a person has a gallbladder, once a person consumes a, a, a meal that has sufficient lipids in it, and those lipids get into the small intestine, the gallbladder will actually pump out and squirt that bile into the small intestine for emulsification, digestion, and absorption of the fats. Okay, so the liver makes it, the gallbladder stores it and releases it. Now, if the gallbladder is removed, then the liver will essentially do the job of, of putting it into the intestine, and you'll bypass this intermediate step of the gallbladder. Now, this compound is in the form of what's called a bile acid. The reason it's a bile acid is because this sulfur, which has these three oxygens on it, and this oxygen in particular, where my mouse is, has a dissociable proton on it. And you probably know that at physiological pH, this hydrogen will be removed and dissolved in solution. So this oxygen will actually have a negative charge on it. So the bile acid is really not how it's going to exist for the most part at physiological pH. And so generally when these bile acids are released, they're going to be secreted in their 
uh, deprotonated or ionized state, and they'll th therefore be electrostatically interacting with a metal cation, like sodium or potassium. So this is a bile salt. And typically when you're naming it as the acid, you call it in this case, tarocholic acid, but when you name it as its salt, you call it tarocholate because it's in its deprotonated form. All right, so now we've sort of talked about at this point where the bile comes from, how it's released into the intestines, and what its functions are. Now let's discuss its biosynthesis. And the biosynthesis of all bile acids in humans is going to be ultimately from cholesterol. Now, in cholesterol, gets a bad rap, but there are many ways to get rid of cholesterol when you get it from the diet. Um, one way, which we're going to discuss in another video, and you may have already seen it, uh, there's an enzyme called sterile sulfotransferase. It's in the liver, and it will actually transfer a sulfate from PAPS onto this hydroxyl group. It solubilizes it and allows it to be excreted. But it turns out that the synthetic pathway for bile acids actually gets rid of about 70 to 80 percent of this cholesterol. So it's very important um, in the uh, elimination of this substance so it doesn't build up and precipitate. So first of all, let's discuss the synthesis of what we call primary bile acids. So we're ultimately going to make secondary bile acids, but we have to make primary bile acids first. Our starting material is cholesterol, and we have this enzyme found in the liver. This is cholesterol 7-alpha-hydroxylase. Sometimes you'll see this as CYP7A because this is a cytochrome P450 enzyme. And what this enzyme is going to do is it's going to hydroxylate the molecule of cholesterol right here where my mouse is. And so what you'll see is this OH added on a dash right there. Okay. Now, that gives us this molecule, which is called 7-alpha-hydroxycholesterol. One thing I'm going to tell you before we go to the primary bile acids here is you should notice with the molecule cholesterol, several uh, changes are going to have to be made to this molecule before we get to these primary bile acids, before they're complete. First of all, notice this OH group that's on this uh, position right here. This is actually the three position of cholesterol. Notice this hydroxyl group is on a, is on a wedge organically speaking. It's in what we call the beta position. When we look at the primary bile acids, or bile salts, notice that uh, that OH group has been isomerized into the dash, organically speaking. So it's now in the alpha position. So we have a beta to alpha isomerization. That's one thing that has to occur. Also notice in both of these bile acids, there's this hydroxyl group on the 7-alpha position. The alpha indicates that the hydroxyl group is on a dash, and it's at the 7 position in both what we call cholic acid and chenodeoxycholic acid. Okay. Also, this double bond that's present in cholesterol and some steroids also is gone, completely reduced. So this double bond is actually absent in both cholic acid and chenodeoxycholic acid. And then also notice that the tail of cholesterol, as most people call it, has been trimmed a little bit. It's not completely gone, but it's been about halfway removed, and it terminates in a carboxylic acid. Here the carbox carboxylic acid is shown in full. Here it's abbreviated, but we still have a, a shortened tail, and it ends with a carboxyl group. Okay? Now, I'm not going to show you the entire... A biosynthetic step with each enzyme because it gets a little too complicated, but it suffices to say that 7-alpha-hydroxycholesterol in multi-step processes is converted to cholic acid, which is the acid form, or cholate in its salt form, and the other one is chenodeoxycholic acid in its acid form, or chenodeoxycholate in its salt form. Okay, These are the two primary bile acids. Okay, Now these bile acids can be, uh, they can actually be uh, processed further into what we call secondary bile acids. This is actually a fairly uh, straightforward process that we'll discuss in a minute, but we'll, before we go any further I want to discuss two other things. First of all, there's another pathway by which we can actually synthesize chenodeoxycholic acid. It's actually what we call the alternative pathway, and it actually requires a mitochondrial enzyme. It turns out there in the mitochondria, we can get cholesterol into the mitochondria, and there's an enzyme called sterol 27 hydroxylase. Um, this is also a cytochrome P450 enzyme, it's CYP27A1. 
This enzyme will actually hydroxylate cholesterol instead of the 7 position, it'll do it at the 27 position. Now, I don't have this structure here, but it suffices to say the 27 position is actually on the tail of cholesterol. So it's going to start the hydroxylation in a different place. But in any case, through multi-step processes, we can convert 27 hydroxycholesterol into kenodeoxycholic acid, one of our primary bile acids. Another facet, which is also very important, is that this cholesterol 7-alpha hydroxylase in general, in our primary pathway here, this is the committed step in bile acid synthesis. Cholesterol has a lot of fates. For example, in steroidogenesis, or the synthesis of steroids, the side chain cleavage enzyme is the committed step, and that will actually give you pregnenolone, the, one of the parent steroids. In this pathway, this is our committed step, so it would make sense that this enzyme is regulated. It turns out that, and it doesn't look like I've shown it, but both kenodeoxycholic acid and cholic acid can actually feedback inhibit this enzyme. And the way that they do this is actually not by getting into the active site. It's not kind of a competitive inhibition. It's actually through the regulation of gene expression. These two molecules can actually activate a receptor that's in the cytoplasm called the far Farnesoid X receptor. Farnesoid X receptor, sometimes called the bile acid receptor. And sometimes, due to it be co being called the Farnesoid X receptor, it will be called FXR. And when these molecules, these bile acids, bind to that receptor, the receptor then dimerizes, moves into the nucleus, and shuts off the transcription of the gene that encodes this enzyme. And so that enzyme doesn't get made. So that, that's a way for the cell to say, well, if we've already got plenty of these two primary bile acids, we don't need to make any more. So shut off the synthesis of this enzyme. Okay, so these can actually feedback and negatively, in, negatively regulate the synthesis of that enzyme, okay? Now, we've talked about now how to get the primary bile acids, cholic acid and kenodeoxycholic acid. Now, these two primary bile acids can be processed into what we call secondary bile acids, and these are the bile acids that will be predominantly released uh, by, by the gallbladder or the liver, depending, into the small intestine for the emulsification and digestion and absorption of lipid substances. And the way this, this works is in two steps. It's a two-step enzymatic process, and it's the same two steps in each of these cases. So let's start with cholic acid. So the first thing that has to happen is we have to ligate the cholic acid to a coenzyme A. The coenzyme A is essentially going to get ligated to the carbon of the carboxyl group on the tail of cholic acid. And so what we'll end up with is cholyl coa and then we have this enzyme called bile acid CoA amino acid NaCl transferase. This enzyme actually can add one of two moieties onto onto this carbon of the carboxyl group right here, which is essentially now an activated carboxyl group. It can add either a taurine, which is a biogenic amine that's derived from cysteine, or it can add glycine, which is just glycine, the amino acid. If it adds taurine, we get what's called taurocholic acid. And so what you have is the carboxyl carbon right here, now uh, in an amide bond, to the nitrogen of taurine. And taurine is a sulfur-containing biogenic amine. And you see here that this, as we talked about in the previous slide, this oxygen will actually be ionized and bound to either sodium or potassium. So this is taracholic acid. This is our first secondary bile acid. However, if this second enzyme adds glycine instead of taurine, then the amine, the alpha amine of glycine, will then form an amide bond with the carbonyl of cholic acid, and you'll have a peptide, or excuse me, an amide bond, I should say, and this is going to be the structure of glycocholic acid, glyco for glycine, okay? And this process of this second enzyme adding either taurine or glycine will basically repeat itself over here with kenodeoxycholic acid. So the same thing's going to occur over here. We can take this primary bile acid, kenodeoxycholic acid, It'll react first with cholate CoA ligase, the same enzyme over here, which takes this carboxyl group on the tail of the acid and 
first of all, converts it into its thioester form where it's bound to coenzyme A. And then it will react with bile acid CoA, amino acid NaCl transferase. And this enzyme, again, can add either the taurine or glycine. And if it adds the taurine, we have taurokinodeoxycholic acid, which is where we have the kinodeoxycholate now in an amide bond to the amine of taurine. Or we have glycokinodeoxycholic acid, where we have kinodeoxycholic acid, but the uh, carbonyl here on the tail is now in an amide bond to the amine of glycine, okay, forming an amide bond. And now that shows you the synthesis of all four of these secondary bile acids, taurocholic acid and glycocholic acid from cholic acid, and taurokinodeoxycholic acid and glycokinodeoxycholic acid from kinodeoxycholic acid. And again, for the most part, these secondary bile acids are going to be the ones that are going to be released into the into the duodenum uh, from the gallbladder or the liver, depending, for the emulsification of the fats and their subsequent digestion and absorption. And if you notice, taurocholic and taurokinodeoxycholic acid, again, they have this ionizable hydrogen on the oxygen of the taurine sulfur, okay, right here. But the glycine, remember, also has this carboxyl group, and it itself is also ionizable for both glycocholic acid and glycokinodeoxycholic acid. And so each one of these in their secretion really is going to be uh, electrostatically interacted with either a sodium cation or a potassium cation. All right, thus the bile salt form. All right, now there are some other processes that can occur in, in the transformation of cholic acid and kinodeoxycholic acid, and we can get some other secondary bile acids, but those are gonna be bacterial enzymes. Remember that we have a microbiome in our GI tract, and so it turns out there's some bacterial enzymes that can actually do slightly different transformations of cholic acid and kinodeoxycholic acid. We're not gonna cover that in this video, that will actually be the next video where we discuss that. All right, so I hope this video gave you a good understanding of what bile is, what is the difference between bile acids and bile salts, and then also the basics of the biosynthetic pathway for the secondary bile acids. All right, so hopefully this video helped you, it was interesting to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.